dig a little bit deeper, you can see that once you save a trace, you can use playwright show trace and then the name of the zip file to show that trace. So let's switch over to Visual Studio Code and do that here. So before we show how we save a trace, let's actually walk through a trace to see what you can see with these and see why they're valuable and why I'm, ex why I'm actually excited to show you these. I have right here, playwright show trace example trace. Um, when I just run that, it's gonna pull up this viewer and this viewer is just a browser. Along the top, you can see that there are different frames of your test going. So you can see it starts at zero milliseconds and goes to 650 milliseconds the entire time of this test run or this one test. And you can see that kind of as you hover over these actions over here on the side, it's highlighting different sections of the test. So you can see that this is the page go to, this is the page click on the text. Um, this is a page click on a button. And again, it's just the same ones you can see here, but as you as you kind of go across to these, you can see that the page is loading in as you're going across. So it's kind of just a cool network view so you can see what events happen. And that's cool, but when you click on when you click on these here, um, it doesn't do anything on the go to because there's nothing to being clicked on. But when you click on like this um, page click text non-breaking space, it puts a red dot on the page so you can see exactly what that thing is clicking on. And then here it shows when you click, it's actually clicking on the center of that element and it's gonna put that click right there. We'll get back to this in a second. But then what you can also see is that there's before and after. Before it clicks on this, the screen looks like this and it's just the normal screen. You, you can scroll through it. And then after it shows you the next screen that it clicked through. You can see logs here of what it was waiting for, what it's attempting to click on. It's really detailed logging, and it even shows you what, what happens when navigating is finished. It shows you the source. So um, this was the test that I ran to build out this trace file, and it shows you what line you're on. So if you go here, you can see that this is actually on you know, this line of the test. If I go to page close, it jumps into the fixtures. So it's really cool there where you can see exactly what line you're on. So if you have a, a big test with a lot of actions, you can actually see your code there on the side. And then finally, there's a tab here for uh, network. So as you click through these, you can see what uh, what network traffic's going through if that's important to your test. And if you, you can dig in here and see quite a bit more information if it's valuable. And what, specifically why I wanted to show you guys this trace was because I never could figure out why this test actually worked. It always got this green check mark, but it shouldn't work because it's a non-breaking space on this button. And there's no way that this text should find it. But when I was doing this and I could see in the after that it had clicked on something, I could look at the action and see what it was actually clicking on. It made it so much easier to just be able to look at it in two seconds click on this action and say, oh, well, it didn't click on my button, but it found that text somewhere else on the screen, so it was able to succeed. It just makes it easier to find out where you made a mistake when you're writing a long test. So let's get into how you would create one of these traces. So the, the lines that we pulled from the documentation were context tracing start, screenshots true, snapshots true, and then context tracing stop, and then the name that you want to give that. And that can be anything. Um, we're not doing dynamic naming right now and trying to keep all of these. We're just trying to debug one test. So uh, I just added these two lines, one before the original navigation and one right before basically the context is gonna stop anyway. So all, all we'd have to do here is then run PyTest. It's gonna go run that one test really quick and then go create the zip. So if we go back and just do show trace on trace.zip, so now we can see that our test did produce a trace and the, this one's slightly different than the one we did last time, but it's got all the same sections, all the same stuff, and you can click around those buttons. So hopefully that was valuable for you guys. Hit the like button if it was, and I'll see you guys in the next video.